Hello, I'm sorry. There you are. Guess what? We are we just did the Welcome to the Woman's Cave. Oh, we did? Yeah. We did. Hey, you guys, you know, as much as people say the hot spots are the best, I don't know. I know. I think, um, oh, by the way, can you tell we're not in studio today? There's no big screen, no curtain. No. No la no logo in the background. It's kind of well, sad. Well, those are in my SUV. Yes. And I still am suffering from a head cold. Anyway, I'm going to make no it one short. about that, though. Right. I mean, they care about my bronchitis, but not your head cold. Honestly? Goodness. If you guys could see me smack her, I would. But anyway. You should smack the driver. <laughs> I'm going to try to do the introduction really quickly because I'm sure Mr. Gary over there would like to actually talk. Yeah, you'd like to say some stuff. So let's get it. <laughs> so we wrote a whole bunch of books with some wonderful ladies. But, you know, we all the women know the women came. Jade. And well, no, no, you remember to introduce Damn. us. Damn. So awesome. here we go. Here are the books that we wrote. And I thought the voice was bad with other life lessons. <clears throat> and I thought being a grown up was easy. And I thought I could juggle it all. And I thought I did my journey alone. And I thought I had it all figured out. Episode one. Yes, Hollywood, I need to be a more fiction. famous. All right, it's a fiction. Episode one. I need to be more famous. No, she doesn't. Yes. That's a lie. It's a screenplay. Make it a screenplay, people. No. I only have no. reality TV. We're joking. Show. I'm joking. And and I thought he was the one long talk and now delivered. And the workbook. Yay. All of these are available. Excuse me, on Amazon.com, BarnesandNobles.com, and TheWomensCave.com, and and we thought.com, along with our flask and merchandise, you guys, absolutely wonderful. And we have the Inspiration of Women in Literature coming up. Inspiration Women in Literature conference is in Sacramento State University, or you can do this virtually. You can find all that information out on andwethought.com. Also, please proudly support the charities that we support. When you go to the ladies' page all the way down to the bottom, they do awesome work. And watch me. Yes. Oh, I'm sorry. And Jade, I almost forgot. On our she television. Gets me. <laughs> I'm just the driver. <laughs> on our television show in Cal on California on Channel 8. Or you can watch it after it it after it airs, she streams on Amazon.com. See, and I wrapped it up real quickly today. Well done, Jade. Somewhere over there. Well done, Jade. What? Yeah, yeah, there you go. I knew that that didn't quite make it. So yeah. Drive it. <laughs> Ten and two, people. Ten, Ten and, and two. two. Yeah. So, okay, you guys, you are not here to hear about us. You are here to hear about our guests. So, guests, would you like to introduce yourself? Yes. Mr. Gary? Hi there. Let's introduce yourself. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, are, we, are you getting me loud and clear or what? Yeah. Yes. Oh well. So you're gonna introduce oh, you. Oh good, good, you got me. What did you write? You're an author, right? I don't know. You don't yeah. know? Oh. Yeah. I'm Gary. You're an author, so, okay. And I'm yeah. So what and did a book you write? Critic and uh what's that? What did you write? I have written a book called Journey. It's a collection of short stories of science fiction about a teddy bear. Uh, seven of them are the teddy bear. He's in an eighth one. And I have so much fun with teddy bears now. And, and I give them away to different people. But this, this particular character is nothing like what you're used to. Some people compare him to Ted, but he's not offensive. He's not a uh, toilet groomer. He's not sexual, uh, you know, uh, nasty sexuality stuff. He's just a, a fun, fierce-looking teddy bear who scares people, especially kids sometimes. But he came from me viewing a real teddy bear that looked just like him. And I watched the kids and how they participated with him. And they were afraid of him. And some of them came up and gave him karate chops and stuff like that. So in one of the short stories, there's a little kid, and he comes up, and he says, <laughs> and something that lives in the bear says to him, I wouldn't do that if I was you. And the kid just ignores him, comes up, starts to give him a karate chop, and does something, and the bear falls, falls down because he's sitting. Well, he rises up again, and then the kid all of a sudden is in the street, and he's laying in the street crying, and he gets up, the little kid, he's about six or seven, and he gets up and runs, and the bear says, I warned you. 
So those are the type of things that I do, but they're, they're comical, but based on just observations from the bear, the real bear that I saw at a mall when I was working in malls, because I used to work in market research. And those are the people that have the clipboards. And everybody told me about an animaniac, animaniacs episode. I had to see it. Once I saw it, I was like, oh my God, I love it. I love this particular episode because it's two grumpy women. You want to do a survey? You want to do a survey? I did that. I always asked, we're doing a survey. And people stopped, said, what's it about? And I'd say, let me ask you a few questions. But even in this short story collection, there is a story about market research, and I put it on the moon, and my character, the cover, as you see, is a bear on the moon. And are you seeing it? Yes. The cover? Yeah. And so the bear's on the moon, and his name is And so in my next collection, I'm going to explain it. I've just had so much fun with this collection. I've been in this business since the 1970s, off and on, as a salesman, a participant in um, radio, and doing the reviews. And then the outgrowth is just my short stories. And everybody says, write a novel, write a novel. Well, I, as a writer, just want to write what I want to write. And I'm very pleased and happy to be doing it. So, it goes into uh, what we were doing with setting this interview up. I had never done Zoom. I had never done uh, any of the other type things uh, that you have to do this. So when you offered it, I was like, oh, God, how do I do it? How do I do it? So I just followed your prompts. And then the thing came up and said, okay, uh, they're coming, you know, the host is uh, getting ready or, or something in language. Oh, so there you are. And uh, uh, that goes to, and I told you I would say this, that goes to one of my things to writers. Always want to learn. I know yes. too many writers, especially with where I met up with you, there were two, two writers who have given me absolute fits. One, uh, both have gone on social media to criticize me. For what? If I didn't review the book in a timely fashion of a month or so, hey, if you saw the workload of other reviewers, you would be like, oh my God, I have a whole room just that are sent to me by publishers. Finally, and said, you think your book is the only one in the whole world? So that's the point. People should be open to learning and learning the business. And too many of them are not. But most of this event work. And we hooked up because of the event. So I'm um, telling authors, be open to doing these events. You may, may not sell a whole lot of copies, but you'll make connections that will help you sell your books. So again, this whole Zoom is something that I have now learned. I'm learning and I'm using you, you guys and as, as a tool. Authors, a lot of them say, no, I won't do it. It's like there was a show that was there uh, with us called Hanging with the Net. And uh, I met the author. I mean, the, the, he's an author also. He reviewed Eric. my book. He was to review it. And he did a tremendous review. And then the show he had me on, there was an author standing with me. And I said, aren't you going to participate? He said, no, I, I don't need to. Uh, my book's on the internet. There's the stupidity. There's the not wanting to learn. Because you have to be open to doing all types of things to promote your books. And if you do not, then you shouldn't be in this business. I want to say, hanging with the web is always a great opportunity. We officially adore them. Mm -hmm. We mm -hmm. love to work with you them. Know you guys. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, we love them. But um, that's a good 10,000 people that uh, stop by. That uh, they, have, they have a couple thousand subscribers. So we are always fond of being on their show. And it's a great opportunity. Although I'm not, I didn't want to talk about that right then. I wanted to ask you about your review services. Sure. Are they still, are they sure. still open for submission? Okay. Because I know we have other um, authors that listen to us. And are they paid? Yeah, uh, mine is just... Yeah, the mine is just uh, send me an email or, or contact me in some. Uh, I have Facebook now, and they can contact me through Facebook. 
uh, directly on the Facebook page of the uh, social media, or they can contact me directly. It's Gary Rowan, R O E N, and I have a Facebook page written on the page. So they can, they can always contact me that way. Um, I prefer that they do it that way. I mean, you have my phone number, but I don't like to <laughs> really have people contact me. No, don't, me don't, don't, don't get that out. Phone phone and, no. and, Absolutely, and the Facebook that. page. Definitely the Facebook page. You, uh, this actually yeah. shows up on, on like internet television. Yeah. Don't want weirdos contacting yeah. you. Please, no, <laughs> you know, we don't want it. I mean, I'm not saying that you guys are weirdos. People that listen to us, I'm sure you guys are happy. Yeah. But you know, cautious. You gotta be cautious. Yeah. Digital age. Okay, so how long does it take you to write? Yeah, they have to. Yeah, they do. How long did it take you to write your book? Uh, uh, the book, it took mine, it took me a number of years because short stories were done over a period of time. But pulling it together, I had the short stories in March. By uh, May, we had the book out. And we, we nice. wanted to celebrate the convention Oasis here in Orlando. And that was a great way for me to promote the books and I think I sold of a slow, very slow convention, 10 copies. Now that's excellent for somebody that's pretty much unknown, but I'm getting a lot of feedback from other science fiction writers, other horror writers, other other writers in general. Uh, but, but that's what's great about the whole business. They're, they're friends of mine, they have been, but they're, they're giving me unbiased opinions. And Garrett gave me the most unbiased opinion, so I knew that I have something. And it's worth seeing that review come, and, and everybody else says, don't read the reviews because uh, they're going to be negative. So be it. But negative reviews do more to sell books than positive books, oddly enough, because the reading public says, well, why did you not like this? I like it, but that's the key. People go out and buy the book who doesn't it because they read the negative review. So that's yeah. a thing to you two also, that you know, also don't get discouraged because there's a lot of negatives that happen, but turn those negative positive. I'll give you an example, I'm gonna use this. The other day I looked in my house and on the window is what I thought was a dead mouse. Well, I looked and took the broom, whisked it to the floor, and lo and behold, it turns out to be a bat, a real live bat, and it was alive. So I scooped him up, put him out in the yard, and thought, well, he'd just die in the yard. He stayed there for a day and a half, so now I'm going to write a bat who scared somebody at the house, and he's going to encounter my teddy bear. He's not gonna lack. He's not gonna lack when he encounters. <laughs> it's great to see how so, art imitates life, or life. <laughs> either way, <laughs> that's kind of a negative. But but see, I'm turning it back into a positive because I got rid of the guy, and then and then I'm gonna turn it into something funny and 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 something use it. And I would not have thought to use that. So in my case, I use a lot of things that happen to me or somebody that I know about. And then I just turn it into a very positive, plain story. My favorite are cell phones and technology. It doesn't work like it's supposed to. And in the collection, you found out. Um, yeah, you know, that's it. Like, like using Zoom. Um, the the uh, short story, Smarty Marty, is a cell phone that comes live and just gives all kinds of uh, chaos to its owner. And it's a funny, funny thing, and it's just uh, based on a little bit of what happened to me because I, I messed up a cell phone, got water on it, and all of a sudden it's, it kept saying, you open it, it was a flip phone, said it's charging. Well, there's no cord to it, there's no charger connected, and it kept saying it was charging. And I took it into my store, they said, you got it wet? I said, yeah. They said, you killed it. I said, okay. So now I'm working on a story where a woman comes in, this is going to be in the next collection. Mm -hmm. And you know, the, she killed her phone. She says, I killed my phone. How'd you do that? The wash. So I take different things that happen and just make fun of them. And that's the other thing. Writers can always do that, but always turn negatives into positive. What do they say? You got a lemon, turn it into lemonade. You know, yeah. same thing. Turn negatives into positive. And, and you can always do that. And always kind of know who you are and what you want 
And that has been the crux, I think, of what I'm doing. And I'm very pleased with this book and the cover and the way it's being received. Uh, when we did the uh, Authors in a Box in Melbourne, I went over the day before and I hooked up with the used bookstore. It's available in the used store. It's called the uh, New Haven Books on New Haven. And it's available from Amazon.com and the website of LegacyBookPublishing.com. We're working on a, an ebook. It's taking some time to coordinate it, but we're working on it. And when I have it, I'll let you know. When I have the ebook. Oh, great. See, that's what's neat about the interview. You're traveling like you're doing, and, and we can do this interview. It used to be not that way, and you had to go into the studio or you had to do a phone interview. This is terrific, the way that technology has come in. It's I'm not going to lie. I love going into television studio. I do love it. Especially the ones that yeah. I love them. But anyway, Mr. Rowan, we, we are, out are out of time. Yeah. We, we have two minutes okay. left. So with those two minutes, can you tell me quickly where people reemphasize where they can find you, how they can get their book reviewed, and what events you have coming up, what appearances you have? I don't have any appearances set right now, but we're working on that, uh, only because it's Christmas time, and you know that's when things phase down, and I'm used to that. Uh, people can get a hold of me through uh, the website of uh, uh, MidwestBookReview.com. Okay. They can get a hold of me through the website Spotlight Magazine Brevard. They can get a hold of me through my Facebook page of Gary Rowan, and you spell it right, and you'll find me. Uh, they can use, uh, and you've got my email. They can use email, and uh, any way that they want, just look me up on Facebook I, and look me up on uh, the internet. They'll find me, and then they can contact me. And or if they do, are doing an event, and I come by. Please give me a copy. Let me take time and review it. But I'm not talking about uh, six weeks or, you know, whatever. I'm talking about a couple of months or four or five months or whatever. And I'll try to maintain and stay in touch with you so that you know what progress is. But other authors, they don't understand that. So that's their problem. So when, when I get those, I just turn them back to the authors. And I just I say, well, you know, you're a waste of my time. So that's how. So, and <laughs> I hope that you have continued us also, and I appreciate that we've done this interview, and you guys are terrific, and I want to stay in touch with you throughout the year. Thank Absolutely. you. You definitely you. shall. So, so, Jade, would you like to wrap us up? You know, you can always find out what your ladies are doing at andwinkler.com and thewomenscave.com. Well, thank you. Thank you for having me on the show, and I appreciate that, uh, you know, uh, you're doing this, and it's just another outlet for other authors, and uh, it's just, uh, it's a great thing you're doing, and I appreciate it. You have a great well, thank Christmas. Thank you for coming on. Thank you. Yeah. Take care. Just remember that wisdom, wisdom is all around you if you're open yeah. to doing it and accepting okay. it. So peace and love, you guys, from Nona and, and Jade all the way over here yeah. driving. Bye-bye, yeah. you guys.